Thanks for tuning in. We're going to be looking at spatial frequencies today. And spatial frequencies, at least for me, is kind of a tri tricky topic. So we're going to be uh, going into this a little bit slower and a little bit more detail. And because of that, this video might be a little bit longer than some of the others. So what we're planning on talking about is first I'm going to show you uh, something called a hybrid image. And this hybrid image is going to be an optical illusion that was first really kind of discovered in the 90s by a researcher at MIT and at the uh, University of Glasgow. And uh, then we're going to be looking at what it means to have 20-20 vision. So whenever you talk about eyesight, and you talk about, you know, 20-20 uh, vi vision or 20-10 vision or 10-20 vision, we'll talk about what that means, how that relates to visual acuity, and then finally, how all of that stuff is going to lead into this optical illusion that I'm about to show you. Okay, so right here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a picture. All right, so this picture should be kind of blurry. Now, what I want you to do is to look at it, think about what it is that you see, and then kind of squint your eyes, and maybe even lean back uh, from your computer screen and then think about what it is that you see. Maybe it changed, maybe not. But one thing that I can do is I can make this smaller or at least simulate it being pulled back and it should change what you actually see. Whenever I'm getting closer to you, it should change as well. And so, whenever it's close up to you, you see Albert Einstein. Whenever it's farther away from you, you see Marilyn Monroe. Now, I'm not engaging in any kind of like video manipulation or trickery or anything like that. I'm not trying to trick you. This is something that our eyes do. So the purpose of this video, now that you see how this works, we're gonna be breaking down the basic processes to understand exactly what's going on with our perception when we see this kind of illusion. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna be looking at is something called visual acuity. And visual acuity is generally measured through something called the Snellen's E-Test. And this is the test that you see all the time on TV and in movies whenever people go to the eye doctor. You've probably seen this whenever you've gone to a doctor yourself, right? It's on the back of, the, of a door. You got this big E and you got these other kinds of, uh, you know, letters beneath that that are all in, uh, increasingly small as they go down. So this was the test that was used way back when to kind of diagnose uh, problems with our vision. So, whenever you hear someone say 20-20 vision, what they mean is that they have perfect vision. But what that actually means in regards to the Snellen's E-test is that basically to see one of these characters, you can pick any kind of row here, uh, that in order for uh, you to read one of these letters, you need to be 20 feet away. And in order for the majority of the population, they need to be 20 feet away. So that means you have completely average vision. It's good, you don't need to be corrected or anything like that. Um, but what does it mean to have 20 or 10-20 vision? 10-20 vision, that's a little bit different. That means that you need to be 10 feet away in order to read parts of this chart, whereas most people need to be 20 feet away. Way. So basically it's kind of like thinking that your vision is half as good as everyone else's or maybe everyone else's vision is twice as good as yours, whatever it makes you feel a little bit better about that. Um, so sometimes you have people who uh, who go through LASIK eye surgery and have that, uh, you know, uh, uh, parts of their lens corrected and they can actually have 25-20 vision, which means that their vision is actually a little bit better than average now. Uh, another way to think about that is that in order for you, let's say that you had LASIK eye surgery, in order for you to be able to read parts of that chart, you need to be 25 feet away. Whereas everyone else in the world who has healthy vision or average version, vision needs to be 20 feet away. So that, you know, you actually have an advantage there. So that's a question of visual acuity. And what visual acuity is, is basically spatial resolution. Whenever I like to think of it, I like to think of pixels on a screen where something, whenever something is higher depth, it just means that there's more pixels there, right? There's a higher resolution. That's kind of how you can think about visual acuity. So in the center of our visual field, we have very high resolution, right? When we're looking for things with details, we, you know, look at, you know, at whatever it is with the center of our vision. And that's because the photoreceptors that are primarily in the center of our vision, those cones, are physically smaller than the rods, which are on the outside. So in the center of our visual field, we have the highest resolution. We have more pixels, so to speak. On the outside or on the periphery of our vision, we have lower uh, spatial resolution. We have lower visual acuity because those rods are actually bigger. You can kind of think about your computer screen. If your computer screen had different shapes or different sizes of pixels, where at the very center of it, 
and you had very small pixels, and on the outside of it, you had very large pixels. That would change the way you would look at things on your screen, right? You would move everything to the center of your of your monitor so that you could actually be able to read, uh, you know, whatever it is that you're looking for. That's kind of how the human eye works. So we have better resolution in the center of our vision, worse resolution towards uh, the periphery. So what does this have to do with spatial frequencies? Uh, let's let's talk about how spatial frequencies are measured. Looking at the Snellens E test, we're basically looking for these big broad strokes or these big lines, these black and white lines. That's something that you're going to see a lot in this kind of research as well. These sine wave gratings that are going to move from black to white to black to white to black to white. We like to study vision and visual acuity using these basic black lines. This is going to lead us into a completely different conversation about edge detection. There's another video for that you should check out, uh, which is going to help us moving forward by understanding how those cells are sensitive to those different kinds of lines and things like that. So let me show you a little bit of how this works. What you're seeing right here is an on-off or a center surround cell. We talked about this in, in the lateral inhibition video, uh, but basically this is a ganglion cell that whenever there's light that's, that is uh, falling across the very center of this is going to be excited. In other words, it's going to create more action potentials. So let's talk about seeing details. Uh, imagine now if we had a, uh, like a, a black line that just fell across the center of that cell. What would happen is we would have an excitatory response. This excitatory response would be basically an, an increase in these action potentials. Is let This cell is letting our brain know, hey, there is a line or there's a, a piece of light that has fallen directly across you know, this part of the cell. For this particular cell, this goes on throughout many different cells in our retina. But let's look at a different example. Let's look at kind of the opposite of that. What if you had lines that fell across the, uh, you know, the top and the bottom of this that are ignoring the middle of this? What you would have is basically an inhibitory response because those two lines are falling on the surrounding area of that cell. So they're creating less action potentials now. Basically, you're inhibiting that response. That is meaningful for the brain. We're now understanding a little bit about the detail it is that, that we're seeing. But let's look at what it means uh, to, to have something that is beyond our visual acuity. So let's say that for this particular cell, we had lots of white and black lines. This would actually generate a baseline response because those white and black lines are gonna cancel each other out. You have a, lots of them falling on, on the inhibitory uh, surrounding part of the cell, lots of them over the excitatory center part of the cell, and those two reactions are gonna cancel each other out, and so we're not gonna see lines. We're not gonna see black, we're not gonna see white. We're gonna average across and have a baseline response. In other words, we're not gonna really detect seeing anything. It's just gonna be mottled gray. So. I like to show this uh, this figure right here. This is uh, you can kind of think about uh, these little pink circles being these ganglion cells, right? So the ganglion cells across these varying uh, spatial frequencies. Where on the left we have larger spatial frequencies, and on the right we have much finer, smaller spatial frequencies. What uh, what would reach our eye? is going to be these black and white lines in both cases, and you can kind of see where our pink ganglion cells are in our retina. But what we're actually going to perceive, if you look down below these, is that for the left, we're going to see white and black lines, but for the right, we're going to see gray. Now, why is that? The reason why that happens is because if you look up here, we have lots of lines that are falling on the center and the surrounding part of that ganglion cell thereby canceling out those signals. So it just gives us gray. We're averaging across. We're not really detecting any line at all. This is normal baseline response. Okay, so let's pull back a little bit. Now that we kind of understand what goes on with these spatial frequencies and with these lines and things like that, let's talk a little bit about contrast. Contrast is basically how easy you can tell one line from the next or one side of luminance versus another side of luminance or one color versus another color. Chances are if you have Instagram or if you have Snapchat or any kind of photo editor, you probably played around with contrast, right? People like to 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 really jack up, you know, the levels of contrast to kind of uh, emphasize some of the details in their pictures. You see that a lot these days. You, whenever people are, are putting filters on their photos, they're usually adding some levels of contrast. So for example, if I took this video and I raised up the contrast, this is what it would look like. 
But let's say that I wanted to remove the contrast. If I removed it, it's gonna to get to a point where it's really hard to see anything at all, right? So on either extreme, it looks kind of bad. At high levels of contrast, it looks bad. It looks really grainy and messy. At low levels of contrast, it's just completely blurry and you can't really see anything, right? So our ability to detect these lines and these edges and these details is gonna rely on two important things. The spatial frequency of that light, so those lines and how thick those lines are, but also the levels of contrast. So how easy is it for us to tell what constitutes that black line and what constitutes that white line? So at low levels of contrast, it's really easy to, or excuse me, at high levels of contrast, it's really easy to distinguish white versus black. Right? We know this because you can see all the details whenever you increase, you know, uh, that contrast. But at low levels of contrast, it's really hard to see any details at all. In fact, at low levels of contrast, what the human eye is best at detecting is going to be something called the middle frequency, which is kind of like, like this Goldilocks zone. It's not the low spatial frequency, it's not the really high spatial frequencies or the really detailed areas. It's going to be this nice kind of middle area, uh, not too low, not too high, but just there in the middle. At low levels of contrast, that's what the human eye detects best. At high levels of contrast, though, we're really good at detecting across all of these. Um, because what we're really doing is just kind of enhancing, you know, uh, the difference between black and white for these tiny little details. Okay, so how does this relate to the Einstein illusion? Well, because basically, whenever you have that image and you look at it from afar, what you're really only able to pick up are those low spatial frequencies. You're only able to pick those up. As it comes closer to you, those low spatial frequencies are now harder to see because the, the details are now, the, those high spatial frequencies are more predominant and so they take over. And so there's this nice little switch point where we see things that are really kind of blurry and it looks like Marilyn Monroe, but as it comes closer to you, that face switches over as the human eye is starting to pick up better on those high spatial frequencies. So one really kind of interesting thing about this illusion, if you have glasses, look at it as you know Albert Einstein, and then take off your glasses, and if your vision is poor enough, uh, you may actually see Marilyn Monroe here. And that has to do all with how light is refracting onto, uh, the, or how the, the, the light is going through the lens and refracting onto your retina. If you see that, you're probably a little bit nearsighted, right? Uh, you're not really good at detecting things from far away. And so this picture of Albert Einstein is gonna now appear to be Marilyn Monroe because you're really only getting those low spatial frequencies at that point. Okay, so I know that was really kind of complicated. Thanks for bearing with me. Thanks for tuning in.